Day three of NAB 2023. It's a lot to say, but it has a nice ring to it. Um, I mean, you know what we're doing here. Let's just dive right in. All right, what are the highlights here at Sony? All right, well, our theme this year is Creativity Connected. We're, we're really bringing our creators together and connecting them via a bunch of different ways, including the cloud, uh, where we're offering a platform, Creators Cloud. We're also offering a, another platform called Networked Live. So these are part of four of our key pillars. That was two that I just mentioned. Another one is imaging, which also includes a wide range of our imaging cameras, as well as virtual production. So a brand new virtual production set that we're showing as well. On the camera side, we're showing a few new cameras this, this year, including a few new studio camera models, as well as an FR7 camera that's been out for a little while. It's a PTZ cinematic style camera that can be put in studios, but really gives it that great shallow depth of field. We continue to show our uh, ENG camcorders as well. Um, and then moving into the virtual production set, we're showing a whole wide range of um, uh, real uh, integration with our CLED background display. So what is that with all the cameras around you? Yeah, so basically the, the set, the, the build that we have there is it's part of an SDK demonstration that we have where you can actually stand in the middle of there and it creates an avatar. Um, basically a view within a few seconds. Well, I think it's within 40 seconds. Now you have to check with the team on the specifics of it, but it's really cool. Stand in there, it creates an avatar of you, and then you, you can go on from there. But should, you should definitely check it out and, and talk with the, the specialists there, because they'll take you through a, a full demo of that. Okay, avatar time. With the SDK, we can automate all the biggest pain points, which is how do we trigger cameras? How do we synchronize cameras? How do we control the aperture and focus of all the cameras and download it? And we'll, once we download it, now we can generate a holographic video. Uh, and this holographic content could be also in photogrammetry, Nerf, and it can get reanimated so we can have it move around so we can put it in inside of an XR stage, or it could be inside of a game, or it could also be um, used in any uh, uh, video content that you need. Okay. Look, look, the... look to, what, what camera do I look at? Uh, All of them. Oh. My eyes have to go low. <laughs> All right, so we're at Tilta and you're holding something really cool. Can you tell me a bit more about it? Yeah, so this is the Nucleus Nano 2. Uh, this is our newest wireless lens control system. Uh, it is a follow-up to a previous system that we had, the Nucleus Nano. Um, there's, there's a lot of big updates, but the, the biggest kind of overviews are that it now can control up to three different motors. Uh, it has increased flexibility for uh, a few different uh, camera, gimbal, and, and motor combinations um, in terms of camera control through USB-C and also uh, some fun features like uh, lens integration, um, kind of like saving profile. And uh, yeah, just, just some fun, you know, kind of quality of life improvements to, to help ACs and uh, filmmakers. Just, just a brief overview. So the this is the wheel right here. Um, this is going to be your main focus control. And as you can see, there is a, a pretty nice um, LED screen on the side that lets you kind of monitor your information and also gives you access to all the increased control I was just mentioning. Um, is it touchscreen? It is touchscreen. So as you can see, we can adjust. So this would be the menu where we could connect one of the motors to the camera via USB-C, Wi-Fi, or Bluetooth. And we could adjust settings such as aperture if we're using a photography lens. ISO um, and on some models this isn't going to work for every single one but even data rate resolution you know so, some pretty uh, specific and advanced uh, features as well as you have your lens profiles as I mentioned meaning you're able to calibrate ahead of time have a preset you know lens set in the system connect the motor and be pretty much ready to go um, but besides that uh, that's kind of your main option for controlling focus you have a zoom rocker on the side so that would control your second motor and then when used in combination with an external hander handle you gain a extra wheel that can be used for focus iris and zoom um, as well as a joystick that you can connect with the Ronin series of gimbals so all right, very nice, thank you. So here we have this lens, and here we have another lens. I think this is also a lens. Ta-da! 
my review of this booth. Okay, we're here at SSL. Can you tell me what you're showcasing? Yes, so today we're showcasing consoles specifically for broadcast music, but we're also launching our System T for music console. So it's an immersive music console for digital production in recording studios. Can you tell me a bit more about the specifics? Yeah, so it's, um, it's a console which has been around for a couple of years and we've come up with some new software and that new software is specifically geared towards immersive music production like Atmos, Sony 360 and so on. Um, we control digital wor audio workstations with it and we also um, integrate very well with the rest of the Atmos environment um, and a 9.1.6 speaker system. So it's new software for the show specifically for audio production for Atmos. All right, give me this. All right. You, you need to wear this. You need to wear this. She's so confused right now. She is. Hello, welcome back. This is uh, this is Michael with Check Room. I'm not with Check Room. I just like taking their microphone and talking to them and doing interviews. So tell me what your show's been like so far this year. Oh, lovely. <laughs> Watch the NAB New York video. Then you will understand what is going on here. So you want to this see is Michael. Next? He is. Check this out. You ready? You ready? Watch this. So the first thing we got happening, popping. See that bag move? That's called counterbalance. That's stabilizing. Ooh, stable. Whoa. Yeah, something that I'm usually not. But then the other thing, you see this? You wanna? She's gonna freak out real quick. You ready? Yeah. Watch. Whoa. Whoa. That. No. And huh. my power's plugged into it. It's it's so it breaks my it hurts my heart. Is, it's a tether. Oh, this is a power. Okay. So I can run all my cables, my audio, anything through here, and it's hooked up to here, and it has elastics. It keeps getting better. All right. So what's new at Anshin Yu? So we're here at NAB 23, um, and we are with Ingenue. Actually, the company is called Dan Pro Ingenue Americas because we represent Ingenue in North America and South America. And here we're showing um, sort of a new concept of the way lenses are put together and built. We've always made very high-end, very prestigious cinema glass. Now we have a set of primes, and primes being focal lengths from 18 to 200. Those are the fixed focal lengths that cinematographers love. But we've designed it so that one set of lenses can have many different looks. Where typically a lens you buy because you like the look of this lens, you like the look of that lens, it, it, which is great, they very, can be very pretty lenses, but it's really not economical anymore to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars for one look. So Ingenue developed a company called, a, a product called the Optimo Prime. Like this, this is our 50 millimeter. Out of the box, it's a very cinematic, beautiful lens. But let's say I want to shoot a period piece and I need it to look like an older lens. Um, I can then disassemble this lens fairly easily where you remove the front optics, then place inside it an additional optic that will sit in and change the character, and change the personality of the glass. So now it comes a completely different, different lens to use. Uh, so right now we're starting with the front ring of the lens. Uh, that's gonna give us access to the, the screws, which is gonna, the screws are holding the, the front element block. Pretty much like the heart of the lens. Um, that makes uh, to where the, all the elements are dust proof, dust, uh, you know, it has a good seal of it, so not worrying about, you know, debris or anything getting to the elements and stuff. And right behind it, it's gonna have the IOP and the iris blades where we can be, be uh, swappable, changeable to, whatever customization you like, whatever look you want to the lens. So it's a fairly easy uh, process. Um, someone new that's learning can take about 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, someone technical can take about five minutes or less. Um, so right now we're gonna- How fast can you do it? Uh, I timed myself today. My record's been two minutes and three seconds. In all fairness, we also have been doing it blindfold on so once you get good at it it's pretty good he can he can do it blindfolded yes he can <laughs> that's impressive that I don't is recommend it to anyone else. yeah so right now I'm taking the retaining ring off so this is the retaining ring 
and then this is the filter holder and the filter is inside with this little tool you can take it off here you have your filter and then with the same tool I took the filter off position there and the iris comes off so then you go out, pick your look, whatever filter you want to put inside the lens, and then just do the reverse process. All right, so we're here at Innovative. This is a product that we see with all our customers. What is the most popular one, you would say? Yeah, I feel like the Voyager is probably one of our most popular products. It's our most travel-friendly uh, workstation. It folds up without any tools into itself, so the top and bottom clamshell together. The posts fold in easily and the wheels stack in, so you can travel with it quite easily. We have some cases behind you all folded up, um, airline-friendly as well. So it kind of suits a variety of demographics, people's jobs, use cases, people that are on the go. And can you tell me what makes it so easy to build up? Yeah, so everything's toolless, so you don't need any screwdrivers or bolts. Um, you just push a couple buttons and everything unfolds. So it's, it's quite easy to use. Yeah. And what are the extras that you can add? Yeah, so with all of our workstations, you can add monitor mounts. We make uh, masts and baby pins and things like that. Um, different troughs you can add. You can add shelves cable hooks, things like that to kind of haul stuff, um, all while making your kind of portable workstation in the fields. I think maybe now we've done like 3% of the whole NAB show, so I think if we want to see a full coverage of everything that you can use in an actual setup, we should definitely go check out b &H because they will show you how to put all the gear together for that really nice setup. I don't know, Checkroom makes the finest uh, Velcro, I'm sorry, hook and loop, beep, they make the finest Velcro, sorry, make the finest hook and loop, take three, make the finest hook and loop wire protectors. They also make an okay like inventory software, but really what it comes down to is these 